So most of this stock I'm working with is a full four quarters um, in thickness and the legs to my chairs are actually about six quarter by eight quarter. So what that means is I'm going to have to laminate some of these pieces together to get um, pieces thick enough in order to cut out the legs for these chairs. And here's an example of one of those leg blanks. Uh, I just got the square on there just to make sure that I had everything all jointed square and everything. So this leg blank is about three and five eighths by one and a half by about 42 inches long and that's going to be one of the back legs that will also extend into the back of the chair. Well, let me go over right now how I got uh, to this point um, in making these blanks. First I select a piece of stock that I think will work for one of these leg pieces and um, so what I chose here um, is a piece of stock that is mostly rift sawn. So what rift means is it's kind of on, if you look at the rings of a tree, they go around and this would be kind of the diagonal portion of those rings. And so what that gives you, uh, rift sawn wood is really great for leg stock because what that gives you is nice straight grain on all four sides of the of the piece. As you can see here, you can see straight grain lines going all the way throughout. And so this will make a very good piece of wood to make that leg stock out of. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this long board to rough length and the board is actually about 86 inches long and so my leg blanks need to be just over 41 inches long so I'm going to go ahead and just split this right down the middle right around 43 inches. The next step is going to be, I, um, I have to joint one face and one edge of each one of these two boards that I just cut out. Okay, now that I have one flat face and a perpendicular edge, now what I need to do is cut this board to its rough width, which is three and three quarter inches. <laughs> And now I repeat all of that with the second board. Okay, so now I've got two boards. They are cut to their rough width, jointed on one face, and it, it's squared to both edges. So all that's left on these boards is that we still have a rough face on the back side of the board. But I'll address that after the glue up, because these are boards are one inch thick each and I'm trying to get um, a one and a half inch thick piece of stock out of this. So now I'm going to glue it up.
Okay, so there's one all glued up and clamped. Um, I don't really have any real set rules on how I clamp these up. I just may have used a little too much glue on, on that one. But basically I just make sure that I have an even glue squeeze out. Um, I use enough clamps to get that squeeze out. And um, once I get it, I'm good to go. Uh, here is one of these fresh out of the clamps. So you can still see there's glue here. And uh, it's rough on both sides. So now we're going to finish off this leg blank. Going through pretty much the same process that we went before. I'm going to joint um, one face and joint one edge. And then I'm going to pass it through a planer and then finish off that final edge with the table saw. Now my leg blank has one face and one edge jointed, so we know that this is square um, or perpendicular. These two faces are perpendicular to each other. Now this isn't exactly recommended, you usually don't do it this way, but I'm going to go ahead and reference off of this face here and joint this edge and I'll explain why in just a minute. Okay, so the thickness of my rough blank at the moment is right around two inches. I need to get this to about an inch and a half. And I could do that by running it over and over and over through the planer, but in an effort to save my planer blades, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it on the table saw and take off, you know, a, a good quarter inch and then finish it off at the planer. In order to do that, I'm going to run the piece through the table saw this way and then I have to flip it end over end and run it again. The reason for that is because this dimension is about three and three quarters of an inch and my table saw's capacity doesn't go that high. And so I just have to improvise and that's the reason why I jointed the opposite edges of this board. So now this blank is about one and nine sixteenths and I can use the planer to get it down to the final dimension of one and a half inches. There you go, two passes instead of, you know, like 20 passes to get the right dimension. <clears throat> the only downside to doing it that way is that my glue line ends up being offset uh, to one side um, because I'm not planing equally from each side. Uh, so hopefully the glue line, once I get everything cut out, the glue line won't be noticeable and so it won't, shouldn't make a difference 
Anyway, but we'll find out once I get these legs cut out of here. Okay, step one for tonight is to turn all of these pieces into blanks. I'm going to get two front legs out of each one of these glue-ups like this. So hopefully I can get all five sets glued up with the clamps that I have here. As long as I get even squeeze out around all four edges, I'll be happy. But first got to fill my glue bottle. So while the glue sets up on those leg blanks, I'm going to take this piece of half inch MDF and this uh, template that I printed off off of my uh, actual SketchUp drawing, and I'm going to lay out the pattern for the rear legs in the back of the seat. All you know that I'm going to show you. All right, so. So this part of the chair, which incorporates the back leg and the back of the chair, is all going to be one piece, and I'm making, I'm making that pattern. I think I'm going to cut out a little helper. I'm going to cut out a two inch thick strip just so I can make these parallel lines to the front edge of this, this template. Alright, so I have this little strip of plywood that I cut and I'm going to line it up with the front edge. And I'll it's doing is giving me a parallel um, so I can trace this back parallel edge like that. That way I have my two inch leg thickness that I'm shooting for here. this rounded end here that I'm still figuring out how I want to do. I think I need to get a square. I'm going to assume the end of this piece of plywood is square. It'll be close enough. So that's the profile of the back leg. I gotta cut this out now. I think I'm gonna use my taper jig to try to get these angles perfectly straight. We'll see how that goes. Alright, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this sled, I'm gonna flip it upside down, and I'm gonna line it up with my first cut. Exactly. And this edge, this edge lines up perfectly with the saw blade on the table saw. And so that'll make that first cut, and then I'll do that for the second cut like that. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do the other two yet, but let's get to that point at least first.
What do you think? Alrighty, let's flip my screen around so I can see. So, I don't know if you can see this. But um, you can barely make a, a whiff of that line that I laid out there. And then the important one is right here, which you can barely see as well. Th this measurement is the important measurement because this is the top. Uh, this represents the top of the front leg as well. So the, as long as this is the exact same height as the front legs, then there will be no tilt in the chair. Um, eventually, I think I'm going to clip off the back after the chairs are built to give it just a little bit of lean to make it more comfortable, but we're not going to even bother with that until we get these chairs built. I'm going to go ahead and do this other angle now. Okay, so I just realized that now that I have this flat and this flat, I can just set my table saw fence to two inches and I will cut up to just about here and just about here and then I can finish the rest off with a, a jigsaw or something because uh, the back side doesn't really matter. Really the most important reference, like I said, were those two points and this flat right here because that's where the uh, side rails will join into the back of the chair. I'm going to go ahead and switch my fence over to the left side, which is probably the first time I've ever done this. Scale is calibrated over here. Or if my fence will fit over here. There we go. Alright, that's that. I'm going to do the rest with the jigsaw and probably this end also, this rounded end here with the jigsaw. And then I'm going to have to refine everything uh, with the sanders. You know, this MDF is so soft that the any slight movement, you know, makes the teeth of the table saw just eat right into it. So I'm going to have to smooth it out because I'm using this as a routing template. Alright, so let me explain what I'm doing here just in case it is an obvious so, this is the back and the rear legs of the chair. It's a pattern. What I intend to do is take one of these leg blanks that I've made and set the pattern on it and line it all up perfectly. Make some reference marks for some mortise and tenon. Uh, well, actually, just for the uh, mortises. And uh, outline it. And then I'm going to cut out the rough shape on the bandsaw. And then I'll go and reapply the template and actually fasten it with some staples or something and then use a pattern bit on my router 
to write out the final shape. I just feel like with that this complex multi-angle shape, I don't think there's any way I can repeatably make them uh, just using the table saw. And uh, basically, I can't make it the way I made the pattern, especially considering that the stock is an inch and a half thick. So that's the plan. We'll see how it works out um, once I get some of these going.